All right, hello everyone. Welcome to another Wednesday's high school virtual programming session. Um, today we have a good one in store for you. We'll be talking about balancing school and work night, life, school and work life. Um, so uh, just to get started, I'm Jay Boss, a program director here for high school. Um, and on the call with us is Oslacia, uh, Miss Oslacia, who's helping us out, as well as Miss Soma, who's gonna help us out. Um, Ms. Soma will be reaching out to you all in your private uh, messages to, for attendance. So make sure that you're letting her know your first and last name and what school you attend so that we can make sure to get our attendance um, going. So just a reminder, as always, uh, we are mandated reporters, so the, uh, we encourage for you to talk and we encourage you to be vulnerable and open and share things, but um, understand that we are required by law to report anything that we hear that might uh, put you in danger, uh, put someone else in danger, or if someone else is trying to harm you. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're sharing uh, any information on this call today, as well as this call is recorded. So for privacy uh, purposes, we have changed your name to just your initials, okay? So uh, if you have not already registered for our sessions, uh, the registration link will be placed in the chat box. Please make sure that you register for that uh, so that we can have that information as you continue to attend our sessions. Also, if you have Instagram, uh, you know, myself, Miss Fennell, Miss Ra, who's usually on our call but can't be with us today, we all have Instagram accounts uh, for you can follow us for the latest news, anything uplifting and motivating. Uh, so follow us. The IG handles will be placed in the chat box as well. Um, you can follow us at um, get live, J Boss, get live, Fennell, or just plain get live. That'll be placed in the chat box. Also, a reminder for the students who attend North Crowley High School uh, for the Remind app. Uh, please make sure that you join that so that you can get all the information that you need uh, from Miss Fennell. You can text at girls N C H S to the number 81010. Okay. Any other students who do not attend North Crowley High School, uh, but would like to, and I encourage you to join the Remind app, you're going to text at GIT virtual and text that to 810101. Uh, Ms. Oslacia, will you be sure to put that into the chat box? And I see that you did, so thank you very much. So we will go ahead and get started. As always, just a quick reminder, feel free to unmute your mic and talk to us or type your answers in the chat box and we'll be looking out for your answers for any kind of questions that we ask of you, okay? So just started, since we're talking about balancing school and work life, how many of you uh, currently have a job or has had a job while you've been going to school? You can thumbs up, you can put it in the chat box. Anybody? So nobody has a job, correct? I was lucky enough as well in high school to not have to work, but I understand that at some point while you're in high school, you might decide to get want uh, a job or for whatever reason may need to get a job. So this lesson and this session is gonna be a good one for you. So one of the things as we're talking through this session um, and you might be thinking about applying for jobs, some questions uh, for you to keep in mind when thinking about jobs and school and how that it could, could affect you is ask yourself, how can I manage my time to make school and job work for you? 
And also a second question that you could ask yourself and keep in mind is what type of job will work best for the schedule that you have now, the skills that you have, and also your personality type. Uh, I know when I was in high school, I had a pretty busy schedule. So work wasn't much of an option for me to be able to maintain my school working grades, I ran cross country, I played basketball, and when softball season came around, I played softball. So I was pretty busy doing sports. So work, even though I wanted to work, I understood that I couldn't make that work in order to keep my grades up. So those are things that you would have to consider, as well as with uh, personality. Sometimes we get jobs just to get job and make, uh, just to get a job and make money. But sometimes we have to consider, does this job fit my personality type? Am I going to be miserable? And if I'm miserable at this job, how is that going to play over into my school life? Okay. So for now, uh, Miss Oscillation is going to share her screen. We're going to play two videos for you. Uh, the first video, I believe, is a girl who's in high school who's going to be giving you some tips on how she organizes and um how she does time management. And then the second one, I know some of us may be just starting high school, but other others of us might be in our senior year, our junior year, and thinking about college life and wondering, you know, how to balance school and social life and things like that in college. So the second video is going to give you some tips on that, okay? So give us just a minute and we're going to share um, those videos with you. <laughs> Hello. Um, ciao. Anyway, so I'm Avery. What's up? How are you doing? How are you doing today, Jasmine? Also, let me know in the comments when you are going back to school because I love to know. I'm I'm nosy, so let me know. This is what you need to do. You need to stay out of women business. <laughs> Anyways, in today's video, I'm giving guys some tips on how to stay productive in organizational skills, especially with back to school season. Okay, so my first tip is to have a planner. I know this is the most basic organizational tip. Well, yeah, I'm not getting dry talking about the same thing. But trust me, like, it, it works. Planner 2020. Huh? What? Oh. <laughs> okay. But the thing is with the planner, you need to have an organizational system that works best for you personally. That would be me. So for me, what works well is writing to-do lists and writing out what I have to do for that day. The intelligence that that has, the clearance that that has. Another thing that I would do is I would just write down my homework assignment. So I'd write down history, then what I learned that day in class, write down my homework, helped me refresh my memory, and I don't really have to worry about forgetting the homework assignment. There are other forms of organizational systems. I had a very hard time believing this was true. Such as sticky notes. I know that some people put like sticky notes up on the wall, and whenever they complete a task, then they like rip it down. Thank you. You could do like a thing on your phone. Okay, I'm filming on one. <laughs> I'm like, Please, okay, the crickets aren't even laughing. Yeah, you could like set reminders on your phone and then you could be like, okay, I need to do do history homework and then it could like pop up right after school or something. So you just need to find an organizational system that works best for you. The next thing that really helps me stay productive and want to be motivated to be productive is to have a clean workspace. So wherever you're going to be working with online school, whether you're working in your room, wherever you're working, make sure that your workspace is clean. We're actually going to be working at that desk right there, and you see that it's pretty clean and neat and organized. Okay. Whatever you say. So I, I'm going to be working in. I always have to keep my room clean. If you watch my vlogs, you know that I clean like every single vlog, every single day. I always have to clean up because this motivates me to be more productive. I just feel kind of like I closed in in a dirty room. Ugh. I'm going to be a family. Family. Family is a, a product, a material. My next tip is to make your workspace your own. That has so much to do with how well and how successful you're going to be. Control the things that you can, you know? You know what I mean? You know? Whatever that means. What I recommend is, you know, maybe put up some posters, maybe put up some lights, put up 
motivation, your music, your music. Okay, so my next tip is just to have a morning routine. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and I start working out. Kind of honestly, I think I was really ahead of my time. But you can just wake up an hour or two before your online class and exercise, take a shower, do what you gotta do. But you don't have to do like you would be going to school, but I do recommend that you at least eat breakfast and change your clothes. Just to get into that, like, okay, next question. You just do something productive in the morning. Listen to your favorite music. Go on a walk. Do your homework last minute. Girl, bottom line is we're dealing with facts. And my last tip is just to take breaks throughout the day. I think I'm a pretty, like, productive person. But the thing that I probably don't show you guys in my vlogs is me watching Netflix or me watching YouTube. She has said it. <laughs> I hope you guys have the best day. I'm going to see you next Friday. Thank you for that. And while you prepare uh, for the next video, I asked a question in the chat box of which of these tips do you currently do? I saw that CW says none, which is which is kind of surprising. I don't know. That's kind of surprising to me. Uh, BZ says, uh, I really want to put some motivational posters, but I still wonder what exactly to print. Uh, I mean, my best thing to tell you would probably just Google, just Google motivational quotes, motivational quotes for high school students or high school girls and see what comes up write them down. And if you're a creative person, um, make some art out of it. Make a poster on, um, you know, printer paper, markers and things like that. It's cheap um, to do that. So yeah, I definitely encourage some motivational post posters to keep you going. Let's see, JJ says that um, they write down their homework assignments so they won't forget what all I have to do for the day. And um, the next person, I don't want to say your name uh, for privacy purposes, but says that they have a planner. Uh, JJ, I used to always try to write down my homework and then I forget where I write down my homework. I really liked in this video how um, she said that she puts a reminder in her phone so that it beeps at her, you know, at the end of the day. So those are all some good tips. And CW, I encourage you after this to incorporate some of these tips into your daily routine of time management. All right, let's see. The next one is about social life, managing social life, work life, and college. So let's see that one. College means your schedule is about to fill up fast. And I'm not just talking about your courses. Getting involved in clubs and organizations, hanging with your friends, and your newfound independence are some of the best parts of college but it's easy to get overwhelmed. When I was in college, I was balancing 20 credits, an internship, being in a sorority, and working a part-time job. But I survived. How? Say it with me. Time management. Stick around for some of the best tips for balancing academics and social life and not getting burnt out. I'm Cece Allen from Now This, and you're watching A Student's Guide to Your First Year of College. If you have an opportunity throughout college to do more than just go to class, do that. Right, try some things on. Look for club opportunities. Um, find some mentorships. Volunteer in your community. And I only say that if you can, because a lot of us will have a ton of stuff on our plates. So maybe that's not your your thing that you're able to do because you're in a sport or you're, you know, but think about all the experiences outside of the classroom that are gonna be so much more important. Today's episode is all about managing your time between school, social life, and more. To make sure you get started on the right foot, here's Hashim Pipkin, the Director of Communications at the Opportunity Network. There are a number of challenges that can cause anxiety in students um, graduating 12th grade and hitting into college. It is a completely new educational experience with a really robust 
social element. But I think if you start to unpack what actually are the all the elements that make up your college experience, you're better suited to kind of negotiate and navigate that landscape. How do you manage um, partying, I guess, and um, studying? I do enjoy, you know, having fun with friends, you know, going out, playing basketball. But um, I want to balance, like, going to class and stuff because I do have to maintain a 3.3 GPA. terms of striking a balance between uh, academics and kind of social life is really focusing too much naturally on one or the other and not really taking time to step back and reflect and take inventory of when they are feeling drained at the end of every week in the before the start of the next week take stock of what the priorities are for that unique in particular week and I think it's really imperative that students in college especially freshmen start building the muscle memory and habits around proactive planning and alignment with what you want to actually achieve that week. Find a network of close friends that you feel can kind of guide you and you them through these social opportunities because always those social opportunities should fall secondary to what is urgent and top of mind for the reason you're at college, which is to get good grades, achieve, but also have a good time, right? So everything in balance. Did you practice good time management your freshman year? The start of it, no. <laughs> the start of it, I did not. I was just taking it day by day, but I got better. I had to get better with it spring semester or I was not gonna make it through. Cause time management, Becoming an adult, you need it. I schedule my weeks like two weeks in advance. That's a good idea. It takes time and it takes practice, but as long as you have a layout of what you're doing, it really does help you. You do just have to know your deadlines and when things are getting done. You know, if your deadline is on Sunday, 11.59, I don't think it's smart to go out on that Saturday and stay out till 4 a.m. in the morning. So I do think that it's important to, you know, balance between, you know, going out and having fun because, you know, you do need your, you know, break days, but just make sure that, you know, I'm here in college for an, you know, academic, so I need to, you know, keep a balance between those two. If I have a regret, it would be my only regret about college is how much time I spent not doing anything, but also not enjoying that time that I spent not doing anything. I was very active on college campus. Football was the main thing for me. Um, my academics were right after that. And so I would put in this, a lot this much time for my prep for football. This was going to be my study time, and then whatever else I had left, I divvied that out there. I was going to do something in the community. There's the social things uh, on campus, but making sure that my priorities were always taking the majority of my time. Go out and have a good time, but also never forget why you're there. You want to be involved. You want to be engaged. You want to be involved in your extracurriculars. You don't want to spread yourself too thin. But you do want to find those things that you think, for whatever reason, can add value to your collegiate experience. Be very careful and cautious about both the time that you spend and who you're spending that time with. Uh, you know, people can think sometimes because of college life, it's like, oh, I have all the time in the world. Uh, and the truth is, is that when you're talking about productive time, you don't. So that time that you do have, uh, you want to be careful with it. So let's recap. One, focus on time management. Make a list of what's at stake in the week ahead. Two, forge good relationships. Bounce things off people who are not afraid to tell you when you're doing too much or not enough. Thanks so much for watching A Student's Guide to Your First Year of College. Thank you. That was really, really good information. And uh, Ms. Ashalisha, if you can share the link to that video into the chat box, um, I'd like for y'all to have that video, save that video, because even though I know it's focused on um, college life, it's still good for high school life too. Um, you still need time management. You still should have accountable friends and um, all the other things that it talks about. So that was really, really, really informative. Uh, so keep that in mind. So uh, as we go, I'm gonna give you a few more tips to uh, success for um, time management. 
So one tip for success for balancing school and work life and time management is talking about your schedule with your family. So I know a lot of the times when we're in high school, we, you know, we've had a full day of school. Sometimes we go home and the last thing we want to do is talk about more school with our family. You know, we want our friends, lock ourselves in our rooms to, you know, participate on social media. But talking with your family about your schedule and what you have going on and what's coming up um, helps you to balance in school and work easier because they can offer you support. Um, and they can hold you accountable as well as to what you have coming up. So if I were to tell my parents, you know, next week I have to do um, this sports game and I have this project that I have to complete and then I'm off trying to hang out with friends, they could be there to remind me, hey, remember last week you said that you need to get this, this, and this done. You know, just a little bit of encouragement. Um, another tip that I can offer you is to start slowly. So if you're a person who um, usually doesn't have time management goals, doesn't write in a planner, set a schedule on your phone or anything like that, then start slowly. Uh, but remember to start. OK, so don't commit to working a lot of hours immediately because you could get discouraged by that. Um, you know, if you're starting to get a new job, I know when we think about work and getting a job, we want to get money. And in order to get money, we have to work, work more hours. But that can become really overwhelming, especially if this is your first time to deal with how to make sure your homework is getting done when you don't get off work until 9 and 10 o'clock at night and you're tired. Okay? So um, another thing that you can do is to avoid time conflicts by planning your class and your work um, schedules as far ahead as possible. So in the video we just watched, um, the gentleman who was speaking said that he planned out his weeks two weeks in advance, you know, and that's that's a helpful thing to do. It's a, it's a hard habit to get into, but it's definitely not impossible once you start uh, get to going and writing that down every week. What am I doing in two weeks? Even though it might shift, at least you have it written down so that you know what you have planned ahead so that you don't overbook yourself and overcommit yourself to work and to school and to social life and everything else you have going on. Okay, and uh, one more tip that I can give you is to use your time efficiently. Um, the, another one of the men in the video stated, you know, a lot of the times we, we have all this time, but are we using it productively? Are we being efficient with the time that we use? So for example, if your job has a lot of downtime and your boss has no other objections for you, then use those slow periods at work to do homework. So if you're working at, you know, Chicken Express and it's nine o'clock at night and nobody's come through the drive through for 30 minutes and that's how it typically is, then take 30 minutes to pull out a homework assignment and rate on that until the next person comes through, okay? So a lot of the times when we get jobs and things like that, we think about jobs in the sense of like, I'm working for the job instead of, of, of how can the job work for you, okay? So I'm gonna give you a couple benefits that jobs have for you. So a job can also benefit you by teaching you about um, commitment, because in order to even keep your job, you have to make sure that when you have a job, you are committed to that job and showing up on time and, and things like that. And also, once you start building a resume for the future, it looks better for jobs to see that you've had some type of commitment to a job and you aren't dropping from job to job to job, because then it looks like you're not committed and sometimes uh, people who are hiring are less likely to hire you. Um, time management, like I said, you have to be sure that you are showing up to job on time. Um, one of the things that was always taught to me, and I actually learned this in, in high school with playing sports, um, and it helped me out, and it still helps me to this day in work and time management, and as far as being on time is 15 minutes early is on time, and on time is late. 
Like, yes, we know if you clock in at exactly 11 o'clock and that's what you're scheduled for, it's not necessarily late. But a lot of times we clock in at exactly the time we're supposed to be there. But then we spend another 10 or 15 minutes trying to prepare for our shift. Where if you get there early, then you can prepare for your shift, clocking in on time and start working. Okay, so it teaches you responsibility. It teaches you how to handle money. Um, and if you want more information about handling money on Tuesdays, we actually have financial literacy courses, um, sessions that you all can get involved in that'll teach you all about handling your money and help you. Um, and also it can teach you um, how to explore career directions in order to reach your goal. So with career directions, we go through many different career directions in, in our journey as we're growing. I started off um, as a, my very first job was a photographer at the picture people in like the Park Mall in Arlington. And then I worked for a few restaurants. I've been a softball coach. Um, I was a preschool teacher for a long time. And then I decided to get into the kind of work that I do now. So there's many different career directions that will go. And so in working and getting jobs will teach you exactly where you want to be in your career direction. Okay, so are there any kind of comments, questions, anything in the chat box? Okay, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to post those into the chat box. And we are going, we have like a quick PowerPoint um, that I'm going to go with through to you, with you over um, some more time management things, okay? So in thinking about time management, uh, we've said that word a lot today. So just break it down to explain what is time management. So time management is the process of planning and exercising conscious control of time spent on specific activities, especially to increase effectiveness, efficiency, and productivity. And one of the key words in here that I think is a key word is conscious. Because a lot of time we get in the habit of doing things and we lose track of time we're no longer conscious of time and we no longer have control and management over that time. So um, having conscious control over the time that you spent doing certain uh, time um, assignments or work throughout the day, that is time management. Um, so some time management skills um, that you all should consider. If any of these things that you don't have that I mentioned, write those down, make a note of that so that you can start practicing and making a conscious effort to add these skills into your life so that you can have better time management skills, okay? So one of those is organization. Staying organized can help you maintain a clear picture of what you need to complete and when you need to complete it by, okay? So, and then you need prioritization. So being able to prioritize your tasks, starting with the most time sensitive and or a combination of both. So when prioritizing tasks, let's say it's homework, you might have homework assignments that are due the next day, and then you have my homework assignments that are due in a week or two weeks. So you have to consider which of those assignments are you going to do first. Are you going to do the assignment that is due in two weeks first, or, you're, or are you going to do the assignment that's due tomorrow first? Okay, so then goal setting. Goal setting allows you to clearly understand your end goal and what exactly you need to prioritize to accomplish it. So last, last week we talked about SMART goals. Uh, we have that session on YouTube if you weren't able to uh, join us for that session. But with goal setting will help you a lot and goes a lot with time management because it helps you set short-term goals as well as long-term goals so you can accomplish the tasks that you need to complete day to day or week to week or month to month. Um, communication is an important skill for time management. So uh, communication allows you to make plans and goals clear, which lets you focus on completing the most important relevant tasks that align with your goals. Okay. 
and then planning, uh, plan out the specifics of what you need to get done. So with your assignments, or if it's work, uh, if you have uh, school, work, cheerleading, and things like that, plan that out, you know, plan your day and throw in homework. When are you going to get homework done? So you have school all day. After school, you have um, cheerleading practice. And then between cheerleading and work, you might have two hours. So in that two hours time, plan out to get some homework done before work. And if you have a little time after work, uh, plan to get some homework done that. So plan your things out like that. Delegation. Uh, while it can be often difficult to say no when someone asks you to do something at work, it is important to practice having boundaries to manage your time well and ultimately accomplish your goals. So a lot of the times, and I know I've struggled with this throughout my life, is we get asked to do a lot of things. You know, we have work on our plate, we have sports and activities and clubs on our plate, and we have Girls Inc. and we have so many other things. And so, so many people are asking you to do all these things. So one of the things that's important for you to learn is the power of saying no. And saying no without being rude or anything like that, but understanding that you have goals that you need to accomplish. And in order to accomplish that, those goals and in order to have good time management skills, you have to be able to say no to things that are going to get in the way of what you've already had planned, even if it makes you feel guilty. Okay, so then we have stress management. Handling stress in a positive way can help you stay motivated and perform well when going through your schedule. Um, stress management is really, really important because with all the things that we have going on and all the things you might have going on as high school students, it's easy to get stressed out about it, you know, to try to figure out all the online stuff you have to do, the in-person stuff you have to do, and everything else that's on your plate. Um, it's important to recognize when your stress levels are rising um, so that you can maintain the goals and time management skills that you're planning for yourself. So at the bottom it says small breaks throughout your day and by rewarding yourself in small ways as you uh, accomplish your task. So in the first video that we watched today, um, the girl who was speaking says that, you know, her, I think one of the last goals was she takes breaks make sure you take breaks. If there is something, if your schedule is so busy that you don't have time for breaks, consider eliminating something from your schedule so that you can take a break. And when you've set your goals, your short-term goals or your long-term goals, and you've met that goal or you've met halfway to that goals, make sure you're rewarding yourself. Like you deserve to reward yourself sometimes too. Even if it's a trip to Chick-fil-A, an ice cream sandwich or, you know, a spa day or whatever it is, big or small, make sure that you're rewarding yourself for completing the tasks that you have set for yourself because sometimes that can be hard and it can be stressful, okay? So some benefits of having um, good time management and time management skills is greater productivity and efficiency. So you will become more productive and more efficient in the work that you're doing and taking breaks and all those things with those skills. A better professional reputation. So like I said earlier with the commitment um, thing, if you're committed to your job and your work that you're doing and your boss sees that you have time management skills, you're getting things done, you're committed, then your professional reputation is gonna be much better and you're more likely to get raises, promotions, and, you know, opportunities for other jobs that are greater than the one that you're at. Um, increase opportunities for advancement, greater opportunities to achieve important life and career goals, and uh, less stress. Time management equals less stress, okay? Some undesirable consequences, some things that we don't like, and some things that contribute to, like, becoming stressed out um, when we don't have good time management skills is missed deadlines, missed turning in assignments, forgetting 
that we had these assignments to turn in um, when you know that you're capable of doing the work, um, inefficient workflow and classwork. So you might get the work done, but it might not be done to the best of your ability because you were rushing. Uh, you had to do it right before school because you forgot, you were really sleepy and kind of dozed off on it. So your classwork and your work um, at your job is insufficient, it's poor, your homework quality is lacking, uh, which then leads to poor academic reputation and uh, stalling your educational career. So one of the guys in the, in the film, in the video that we were watching said that he needed to maintain a 3.3 GPA. So he had to have good and practice good time management skills. So if you're missing your deadlines, turning in your assignments late, um, doing insufficient or poor quality homework, then your GPA is likely to drop, uh, which means that, you know, if your GPA is low and you planned on getting into this prestigious college, then that's going to put you as a setback, okay? And then, of course, you will have higher stress levels. So now you're stressing out about making sure you have the grades to pass your class for the semester or for the year, making sure you have the grades to graduate, to get into college. Um, how can you manage work as well as school when you're struggling already? Okay, so these are some of the reason, things that you don't want and the reasons why you want to make sure that you're having good time manage, management skills. Okay. So we have three ways for you to improve your time management. So one, number one is to set short-term and long-term goals. Um, your, your goal should be specific, measurable, achievable, irrelevant, and time-based. These, this is what we were talking about last week with having SMART goals. When you're setting your goals, make sure they are specific. You know exactly what goal you want to accomplish. Uh, make sure you have a time set for it, like how much, how many homework assignments a week do you need to complete, um, or how much time do you need to spend, which that goes to time based. And then, is it achievable? If you have 20 assignments, is it achievable to, uh, to do all 20 of those assignments in one day? Or do you break those assignments down four assignments per day, or five assignments per day, or however? Okay, and if, is it relevant to? accomplishing the goals that you have set. Uh, number two, manage your calendar. You might consider blocking off cer certain brackets of time on your calendar on a regular basis so that you are guaranteed to have time in your schedule without distractions. So I know, you know, on iPhone, on Androids, I know there's calendars on there. Utilize the calendars that you have set in the, on your phone because they actually give you reminders. You can set um, an assignment that you have due three weeks out and you can ask your phone to remind you of that, um, that activity or that homework assignment a week in advance so that you don't forget, okay? And three, prioritize your assignments. Prioritize tasks that are most urgent more easy and get those out of the way first before getting those tasks that you need to complete way down the line, okay? So are there any kind of questions, comments about um, time management skills or anything that I have talked you all through to this point? Anything in the chat box? I can't see that right now. No. No? All right. Well, we'll keep it moving along. So we have an activity for you all to do uh, right now. Ms. Salacia is going to put a link into the chat box. That is going to be a time management quiz. So this is going to determine what your level of time management is. So it's just a few questions. So click on that link. We're going to give you a few minutes to do that. And once you're done, um, with that quiz, I want you to type your number that you got for the quiz into the chat box. All right, I see some numbers in the chat box, so let's see. CW, you, I see you put 31, and I know earlier uh, you said you don't have any, or you don't do any of the tips that were shared in the video. 
Okay, so uh, Ms. Soma with a 49, BZ 47, KR 63, JJ 31. Let's see, LR with a 36, another JJ with a 33. So Ms. Oslacia has typed in the chat box what your numbers mean and the range that they're in. So I'll read those. So if you scored between 15 and 30, then the quiz says, ouch. The good news is that you've got a great opportunity to, uh, opportunity to improve your effectiveness at work and your long-term success. However, to realize this, you've got to fundamentally improve your time management skill. So CW, even though you say you didn't do any of any of the time management skills, you didn't score in this range. I mean, you were pretty close, but it says from 31 to 45, you're good at some things, but there's room for improvement elsewhere. Focus on the serious issues below, and you'll most likely find that work becomes much less stressful. And if you scored between 46 and 75, you're managing your time very effectively. Still check the sections below to see if there's anything you can tweak to make this even better. Okay, so on that quiz that y'all did, there's some more information on time management um, skills and tips. So make sure that you are reading through that uh, just to get a little extra uh, help as well as what I've shared with you today uh, for time management skills, okay? So in our closing, I'm gonna ask some, a few questions. Feel free to unmute your mic and answer questions, or as always, type the question, type your answers in the chat box for us to read those. So my first question for the group is to name a time management tip that you learned today that you will apply in the future. One time management tip that you learned today that you'll apply in the future. CW, I'm expecting an answer from you. Maybe to keep a planner. Yes, BZ, that is a good idea. Wake up earlier, okay? That's good. If you start your day earlier, you can add a little more time to your planning and time management. CW says write the assignments down on a sticky note or makes or make a motivational poster. I say do both. Start keeping a planner. Aslesha, I need to do that too. I have a hard time. I, I buy planners and then I use them in the beginning and then somewhere down the line, I just forget and then the rest of the year is empty. Um, JJ says, set an alarm. It's a good idea. All right. Okay, and so my next question, oh, we have another the other JJ says, plan ahead and write assignments. Ms. Aslacia says, I set five alarms for one day. Ooh, I need to get on your level. Every five minutes. I'm snoozing. Wow. All right. So currently, uh, for you all who have work, which... I don't, I'm not sure if anyone had a job, but let's say social life or uh, clubs and things that you're involved in. How do you balance your school and, you know, life with friends and sports clubs? How, how do y'all balance that right now? You're just doing it, huh, CW? Just try to fit it all in. <laughs> BZ says I just do my best well aren't we all aren't we all but it might be a little easier and less stressful <laughs> if we plan it so Ms. Soma social life what <laughs> I need to work on that me too Soma me too I, I need to work on uh, a social life I just have a work life you know so for sure All right, y'all. Well, um, for you all that aren't at North Crowley High School, so wait, first, 
for North Crowley High School, I know for you all that are on the call, um, Miss Fennell says she has some incentives for you all who joined the call today. So make sure that you, if you did not already, send a message to Ms. Soma who's on the call so that she can get your name down for attendance. We're gonna turn that in to Ms. Fennell so she knows who's on the call to make sure that you all get your um, incentive. And I know that they are great gifts for y'all. Uh, if you don't go to North Crowley, then this message is for you. Um, today I sent out an email if you all can reply to that email, um, because on Monday I want to set up a, I want to set up a time before Monday so that on Monday you can come and pick up some gifts that I have for y'all. So for one of those, since y'all need planners for time management, I have a time management kit that I would like to get for you. So CWBZ, I know that you two aren't um, at North Crowley. Uh, if anybody else on the call isn't at North Crowley, let me know. I have a time management kit that I need to get to you. And next week, and this is for North Crowley and for anyone who doesn't attend North Crowley, next week we're going to be doing a yoga session and we have yoga um, supplies for you. So if you're at North Crowley, Ms. Fennell will have that for you. But if you're not at North Crowley, I will have that for you. And I, I want you all to be able to come and pick that up from me on Monday. Um, I just need to set that up with you. So I have a yoga mat, a yoga ball, yoga blocks. There's, it's 11 set, 11 piece set that I ordered for y'all so that y'all can do yoga with us on Wednesday. So if you got an email from me today to come to this session, please reply to that email so that we can set up a time for you to come and meet and get some supplies from me. So also, there are some upcoming events. Ms. Aslacia just posted them into the chat box. North Crowley High School has a trunk or treat. That's tomorrow, October 22nd. And I believe that's at six o'clock. Myself, uh, Ms. Fennell will be out there to give you some goodies for your trunk or treat. Trunk or treat that's tomorrow. Frost Bank. So we talked about job and money a little bit today, but if you wanna find out more information about financial literacy, um, banking, saving money, and things like that, join us on Tuesdays for, um, join us on Tuesdays for Frost Bank Financial Literacy. Um, for physical wellness, that is next Wednesday. That's what I was talking about with the yoga. Um, and then also, if you need tutoring opportunities, um, I'm gonna give you my email. I saw that someone said that they didn't get an email from me and I'm assuming, um, let's see. LR, do you go to North Crowley? Okay. Well, if you go to North Crowley, um, then Ms. Fennell is gonna have um, the yoga kits and materials for you. So um, you didn't get an email from me today, but Ms. Fennell should send y'all information about getting your yoga kits and coming and pick that up from her um, in the classroom at North Crowley, okay? Um, CW, I'm pretty sure that the email went to your mom. So ask your mom to check the email and then respond to me. I actually sent two emails to your mom today for you. So um, respond to, to that email and we can set up a time for you to come and pick up some things from, from me. CW, I also have a, a, a self-care kit that you won on one of the other sessions for you to pick up as well. So um, Ms. Aslacia is gonna share my email into this chat box. So if you did not get an email from me and you do not attend North Crowley High School, send me an email, ask me about the yoga kits so that we can set that up, okay? And you can come and pick those things up from me, okay? So other than that, thank you all for joining the session. Remember, we will be here um, every Wednesday at 4.30. We have lots of prizes for y'all. 
like a lot of things that we bought for y'all to come uh, coming up for these prizes. So make sure you attend. Also, one more thing before we go, we need girls to attend a session that we're having on October 29th. There will be three raffle prizes that are given out for that. We will send you an email and information. It is for Allergan. Um, and if you attend the session in October, November, and December, in December, everybody gets a prize. And I'm telling you, it's a great prize. Um, so it's one session a month. It's with Allergan. We'll send you some more information about that. So make sure you attend. Other than that, that's all I have for y'all. Thank y'all for attending, and I will see you next week. Bye, y'all.